Well, lobbying in the American political system actually is a word that we use to discuss uh, two very different phenomena. The original meaning of the term was people who stood in the lobby of the Capitol. This was before checks, so they didn't even stand there with checkbooks. They stood there with wads of cash. And they paid off members of Congress. They were a firewall between Congress and the public. And their job was to prevent the public's voice from having weight. Now, from that point of view, which is how most Americans think about lobbying, you say to most people, what's a lobbyist? They say a lobbyist is, you say, what's a synonym for lobbyist? Teacher, messenger, bagman. Most people will vote for bagman. That's the kind of lobbying most people think about, and that is a very important part of what happens in Washington. We also use the term lobbying for five school teachers from northern Minnesota who come in to talk to their congressman about the fact they need a new bridge. Now, yes, maybe those are the same things, but calling it by the same term, I think, conceals more than it reveals. And our view of our job is to be that bridge between the school teacher in Minnesota and her congressman. That's an excuse. Uh, that really is an excuse. I mean, first of all, we don't twist on it. Uh, our efforts are to inform, educate, and to, and to hopefully persuade people about what the right policy is. And then, you know, uh, nobody I know twists anybody's arms. <laughs> That's an excuse. I mean, look, we're a democracy, for heaven's sake. You know, we, we can't blame anybody else if things don't happen right in our country. It's our country. Now, yeah, I told you my life story, for heaven's sake. I can't <laughs> You know, I came from a place where if anybody would predicted I'd be in the United States Congress one day, they'd have been laughed out of church. Uh, it just wasn't supposed to happen. But it happens in our country. It can happen and does happen everywhere in this country. That folks coming from every walk of life get a chance to serve. What's the percentage of, of lawyers, do you think, in the United States House? Uh, when I ask that question to people, everybody says, oh, 60, 70 percent. You know, the number is like 28 percent. Most of the people who serve in government come from every walk of life. They come from all sorts of little communities across this country. We own this country. We run this country. If we leave it to others uh, to do it for us, uh, we do a bad job of appointing our managers. And that's our fault, nobody else's. Yeah, again, I mean, I, I have found um, that in recent years I have uh, gotten drawn to what is known in political science as pluralism, um, which is a, a, a sort of strain in political thinking uh, that tends to take a much more benign view of lobbies than, um, uh, than most journalists take. Um, so, uh, I am s the, the, the premise behind the horror over lobbyists is that there's something called the public interest that would emerge naturally if uh, there were no lobbyists, or if, if there were only good lobbyists and not bad lobbyists, or if there were only they were lobbyists, but lobbyists without a lot of cash to throw around, etc. And um, I'm very, very suspicious of the idea of the public interest because it's it's kind of, it's one of the oldest problems in in politics and government. Who gets to decide? You know, I think the the term the public interest is inherently elitist because people just don't agree about what it is. Um, and and so I I like the idea of of, of a democracy's politics as being a kind of market system, 
where everybody has a different take on what the good is, and they sort of fight it out uh, in, in the political arena. Now, some of these groups are going to be more organized than others. Um, politics favors the organized. And, and as you know, all these groups are going to lobby. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that a, a so-called public interest group lobby is, is more legitimate than a lobby like, you know, sugar farmers or a labor union or a, a traditional economic-based lobby. Um, in other words, I'm uncomfortable with the idea that there are good guy lobbies and bad guy lobbies. I, I guess I'd agree that, you know, bribery should be illegal in politics. And I like, I think information is good, and under that flag, campaign finance reform, to the extent that it involves disclosure, is a very good idea. Um, but I, I just don't. I, I think the idea that you can sort of extirpate K Street from American politics is is an illusion, and you might not even want that because it's very hard to define K Street in a sense. Um, is the group that you're, if you're in a group that is opposed to, you know, female genital mutilation in Africa, are you K Street? Are you a lobbyist? <laughs> you know. Uh, or are you, are you a reformer crusading for the public interest? Lobbying isn't a Coke and Pepsi system because the country is so complicated and there's so many groups that you can't say these two groups predominate. There's a tremendous amount of content. There isn't such a thing as the business community, for example, and there isn't such a thing as the labor community because they have tremendous internal dissension. Um, so it, it's really a question of do some, and I, but I don't accept, you know, there's a wonderful book called The, the Process of Government, uh, published 100 years ago almost, 1908, by Arthur Bentley, a former journalist turned political scientist. And he, what the, the term public interest group wasn't around then, but he calls these groups quote unquote talk groups, which is a little mean. Um, but but I'm very uncomfortable with the idea that, that a group that, you know, to use my example, opposes FGM in Africa exists on a higher moral plane than a group that fights for higher wages for itself, for example. I don't understand why that is necessarily so. And you could say that this group of wonderful people fighting against FGM in Africa are actually trying to impose their will on people half a world away who may not sign on to the idea that this is in their interest. Um, so the only real question is, is this is a system designed to create, uh, you know, there's, it's like antitrust. There's a sort of, this is a market. And so markets, I think, shouldn't be totally unregulated. You want to create conditions inside markets where you know, one player and one category of players doesn't have an unfair advantage. So the real question is not can we get rid of lobbying, but have we got, is there a problem in the system where one group has disproportionate advantage over others? Um, and, and then if so, what should we do about it, one type of group? Um, but that's a more fine-grained way of saying it than just saying, yes, these lobbyists are awful, we must get rid of them. Mm -hmm.